Hello everyone. Uh, in this video, I'm gonna talk about power screws. The screws that probably you have seen in jacks, the objects that lift heavy loads, right? So uh, the type of the screw that is used in uh, these uh, systems, power screws, the profile of them is not triangular. If you look here at this profile, you see the profile is uh, typically either a square or trapezoid because it has to be thicker to carry the load and the question is if I have given you the parameters for this bolt and uh, I ask you that hey could you lift this load F for me up or could you lower it how much of torque would you need to apply through this motor or through a manual uh, driving system to raise the load or lower the load. And the other thing that is important is called self-locking condition. So is it self-locking or not self-locking? So let's talk about these. Okay, so here P is the pitch, the distance between two uh, subsequent points. And some threads have, uh, some bolts have one thread, some have uh, two or three threads uh, wound or wrapped around the shank so uh, the lead which is the distance that the uh, bolt advances per uh, two pi revolution could be either equal to the pitch or like two or three times the pitch okay depending on how many uh, threads are available uh, per revolution so in a simple one like this the lead is equal to pitch and if you divide the lead by pi dm, which is the circumference of the bolt on average, dm here is the average bolt diameter, then that is going to be tangent of the lead angle lambda. So lambda is the helix, uh, the angle of the helix, not exactly the angle of the helix. The angle of the helix is defined as the psi parameter. So lambda is like 90 minus that. So cotangent of psi or tangent of lambda you can show that this is equal to what if you form a triangle basically like this then this distance uh, up is L this is pi times dm which is the um, distance around the circumference and then uh, this angle here uh, sorry let me um, write it a little bit nicer so this is dm and this angle here is what lambda so you can clearly see where this formula comes from and f again is the load that you need to uh, raise or lower so these are the parameters involved now here i show you two free body diagrams one for lifting or raising the load one for lowering the load so we can do our calculation so this is lifting the load so assume that uh, here consider like the load that is being lifted consider it like a simple particle here like this okay in red and you are pushing it up the surface right and this surface here this wet surface is the surface of the thread so you are pushing this ball up the surface in order to do that you need this force pr to push it up the surface because there is this force f on that ball that you need to lift up against your motion you will have the friction the kinetic friction and from the surface of the thread you also have a normal force so the normal force and the friction come from a contact of basically thread over thread or metal over metal in this case like your ball is being uh, pushed forward on the object right this force is what you are trying to lift or this is the force that is applied to this object from the top and PR is the force that you need to drive it up the uh, uh, slope. And here you clearly see this, this triangle is exactly what I just drew for you. I just drew for you this guy. So now if F is given, I know F, the question is how much is PR? Okay, P of, and R means raising or lifting the load. By the way here, this uh, parameter F here, F here is the same as mu okay that coefficient of what kinetic friction so this is the same as what mu k so if you see f don't think that's the friction force that is a friction coefficient that's mu k okay so now 
here I try to fix that mu k. So if you uh, look at this horizontal direction and if you look at the vertical direction, right, which here I show by v and h, we are writing the equilibrium equation. So here we assume that the load f is being raised but not with too much of acceleration. So we assume that the uh, motion of this object is very, very slow that we can almost consider it to be what? At equilibrium. In matter of fact, this is not perfectly like that. And there is some acceleration, especially in the beginning. Especially in the beginning, this load is when you start it, you need uh, some uh, bigger force to give it some acceleration. But let's say once you start it, you are lifting it at a constant speed. So the accelerations are what? The acceleration terms are all zero. So you are doing it at a constant speed. And so both horizontal and vertical acceleration zero. Now in the horizontal, you have PR. You have a component of N. As you can see, your N has what? It has angle, right? It has angle lambda. And so um, you have the sine of lambda in the negative direction, right? You see here this vertical component of N and you have this horizontal component of N and this angle here is lambda. So this horizontal component is N sine lambda in the negative direction. And then Fn has a cosine lambda because this uh, Fn also has, uh, let me use a different color, has this vertical component like that, which is negative, and it has this horizontal component, which is negative. And again, this angle is what? Lambda. So the friction term has a cosine lambda negative, and that is this guy equal to zero. In the vertical direction, you have negative uh, F. Now here you see it is shown as positive F. That is an indication that uh, the negative direction is really the V not positive. Otherwise, you would have a negative here. But it doesn't matter really since the right hand side is zero. You can simplify both sides by zero. But if I want uh, these equations to match that V, then I have to what? I have to reverse this V and say that the V here is uh, basically, uh, let me move this guy up. So your V is like this okay so this is your v in that case then yes f is going to be positive f and sine uh, lambda which is this guy here is downward so it's also positive and n cosine is going to be negative because it's upward some of it is equal zero and what would you get out of these two equations remember f is given and pr is the unknown so from the bottom equation, the first thing you do, you solve for n, right? From the bottom equation, you solve for n because the only other unknown in the bottom equation is, the only unknown in the bottom equation is n, right? Sine, cosine, lambda, f, they are all given, capital F is given. So from here, you find what? You find n, and then you plug it into the top equation, both here and here and you're gonna find what PR which if you do this is your answer this guy here this is your PR in terms of F in terms of lambda and in terms of the friction now you might say what happened to lambda well here we use this equality wherever we have tangent of lambda which is sine over cosine instead of that we use L over pi d m so we write it in terms of the uh, diameter and in terms of the lead so this is the force that uh, you need to apply to lift it up now when you work with the jack like this you really do not uh, push it up through a force you push it by a torque you push it by a motor so you want to know how much torque you need therefore since this force PR is applied on what on the circumference right so this force PR is applied something like this in order to find the torque you need to multiply that by the radius which is dm over 2 and that's what you have over here right you multiply the force by dm over 2 and you get the torque and so this bottom one here is what the torque from your motor 
or from your mechanical or hydraulic drive that needs to be used to lift the force. So this is what the torque for lifting the object. In a very similar manner, you can look at the case when you're lowering the load. Okay, when you lower the load, everything looks similar to this case except for the direction of friction and the direction of the force. This time, the object is going to be pushed down the surface, it's going to be lowered, so your force PL is going to be to the left to bring it down, and since the object is going down, the friction is going to be what? Upward, as you can see. Everything else is the same, so you still write the equations of equilibrium, assuming the velocity of the lift or raise uh, or lowering is constant, and you find the lowering force and multiply by radius to get what? The torque for lowering. So this is the torque for raising or lifting the load. This is the torque for lowering the load. And if you look at them side by side, which one do you think is bigger? Well, if you look, this FD over M is the same in both of them. And if you look at the numerator and denominator, they look quite a bit similar, like kind of displaced. So if you look here, this is L plus pi FDM. This is negative L pi FDM. Okay, here the two things are added here. They are subtracted. So you expect this numerator to be smaller than that. Here, pi DM and FL are added. Here they are subtracted. So the denominator here is smaller, but the numerator is bigger. Right, so numerator of TR is bigger than that, but denominator is smaller than that. So the whole thing should definitely be what? Bigger, and of course it is. If you want to raise or lift a force, you should apply a lot more torque than to what? Bring it down, because when you bring it down, this force F itself, the weight of the object, is going to help. Right? But here, you have to overcome the gravity as well as the friction, while here, that weight is helping you. So, of course, you need more torque to raise the object. So these are the important formulas that you can use if you want to select a motor, how much torque you need from that motor. You need uh, this one for sure to be able to lift it and lower it. If you can have this, then you definitely can have the other one. So this, this formula is very important. Now, another thing that is important in bolts called self-locking. What is self-locking? Self-locking is if I have some huge object here with some weight, and I turn this motor off for a minute and have uh, no torque behind the bolt is, so I apply that load onto here, onto this attachment, is this load going to be lowered by itself just due to the weight or is it going to stay in place, right? So if you turn off the motor, can the friction keep the load in its place or no, the weight is going to overcome friction and the load is going to come down. So that is self-locking or not self-locking. So since the idea is about whether the load is going to be lowered or not under its own weight, so we have to look at the lowering the load torque, which is this guy. And guess what? If this guy is negative, if this torque is negative, the torque that you need to lower the object. If this is negative, means you don't really need to do anything. It does it by itself. Now, under what condition this becomes negative? Because this denominator is positive and this FDM over 2 is positive. So the only important thing is this numerator. If this numerator is positive, then the torque is positive. If it's negative, then it's negative. So if pi FDM is less than L, then the torque is negative and it cannot keep the weights up. If the FDM pi times FDM times pi is bigger than L, which is this condition, then you still need to apply some torque to lower the object. Therefore, we say the object is what? Self-locking. And remember that, remember that, if I divide both sides of this equation by pi dm, if I divide both sides of this by pi dm, what do I get? I get f is bigger than L over what? Over pi times dm. And the question is, what is the right-hand side here? What is this uh, L over pi dm? And if you go back here, you see that L over pi dm is tangent of lambda right so tangent of lambda should be less than the coefficient of 
friction. As I said, this F is the same as mu. So what is the condition for self-locking? The condition is the coefficient of um, kinetic friction should be what? Bigger than the tangent of the lead angle. If this condition is the, then it is uh, basically self-locking, right? So that is the condition of self-locking. Finally, there is another term I wanted to uh, show you before we finish the video, and that is called efficiency. Efficiency is the ratio of, there is a typo here, a ratio of the raising torque when there is no friction to the raising torque when there is friction. Basically, this guy here is the denominator. This is the torque when there is friction, when there is F, and the numerator of that is the same thing when the friction is all gone. Basically means this F term is what? Zero, like that. If that is the case, then we call it T naught. Okay, we call it what? T naught. T naught is the friction for lifting an object when there is no, the torque for lifting an object when there is no friction. And if you look from here, you can calculate it, right? This dm and that dm would simplify, so you get fl over 2 pi, correct? It is fl over what? Over 2 pi. This is the torque when there is no friction. Now, if you divide this guy by the same uh, tr, right, which is that formula, this is called efficiency, and you see that FL over 2 pi, this is your T naught, and it's divided by TR, which is this formula here. So that is called efficiency. And of course, clearly, the bigger the coefficient of friction is, the smaller the efficiency is going to be, because a lot of the torque that you use and a lot of the power energy you use is just to what is used just to overcome friction not to really raise the lift or lower the lift okay so clearly you see this is a function of uh, the coefficient of friction okay and it's a percentage so if you say for example this efficiency is 0.4 what does it mean it means out of 100 uh, units of energy that we use or power that we use basically if it's 0.4 then only 40% of that is used for raising or uh, lowering an object, and 60% is used to overcome friction, okay? So just wanted to tell you that. Now you know you cannot bring this uh, friction coefficient too much down because then it's not going to be self-locking. So the, there should be a compromise between better efficiency and also being what? Self-locking on choosing the appropriate um, coefficient of kinetic friction. So hopefully it was useful to you and you learned how much torque you need to lift an object with a jack and what is the self-locking condition for the jack and what is the efficiency of the jack. So thank you so much for your attention and I'll see you in the next video.